So, hey guys, I've just heard about a, another small farm in Michigan that is being shut down because a neighbor complained. So, we're going to talk about that a little bit. Um, hi, this is Sherry Ann Richardson from Experimental Homesteader Exotic Gardening. Uh, SherryAnnRichardson.com and by annual blogathon badge.com. And I hope I didn't say any of that twice. Um, I'm kind of frustrated today because. Um, I was on Facebook looking around and I heard the story of Hidden Creek Farm. And I think it's a bunch of crap. And I think that um, the people that are saying that they have every right to shut them down because of parking and being a nuisance and this and that is just, you know, there always has to be a Debbie Downer in everything. And from what I'm understanding, a neighbor didn't like that there was so much traffic at this farm during an event. And I can tell you from having events at my farm, you don't have any idea how many people are going to show up. You know, parking can get messy. You know, yes, you can have parking along the side of the road. You can even have our off-street parking. But that doesn't mean that there's going to be enough parking for everybody. The same thing goes true when you have a garage sale or an auction or any other type of event. You never know if you're going to end up with more people than what you planned for, more people than you have room to park. It happens like that. And to me, in my opinion, when that happens and you know it's a one-time event, you know, quit going and tattletailing to the nearest person you can to cause your neighbor a problem. Just deal with it. No, it's a one-time event. Now, yes, if it happens over and over and over again, I admit it can be really frustrating. Um, we had neighbors that seemed to want to party all the time. And instead of parking their people on their property, they had their people park on our property. Big difference there. Um... But small farms, small homesteads do have events. And part of the reason why we have these is because, well, it takes money. You know, it takes a lot of money to pay for animals. And you do have to replace your animals from time to time so that you don't have inbreeding going on. It takes a lot of money to buy the feed, especially organic feed. You know, that stuff's not cheap. And it just kills me because people will go to the store and pay $5 for a dozen eggs at Walmart, but they won't pay three fifty dollars for a dozen eggs off of me. You know, and I'm not the only one hearing this. This is a common problem among all small farmers. You know, yet they don't think, you know, yeah, we just spent $90 that week to feed our chickens. And we got to get that money back somehow. You know, and I'm not, I'm not joking about that cost. Organic feed is almost $30 for a 50 pound bag. Now, I give my chickens a variety of feed. I give them, of course, the layer mix. I do the scratch grains. And then I usually pick up something else, like maybe some extra corn, maybe some sunflower seeds, you know, maybe a combination. Then you have your kelp. $75 for 50 pounds of organic kelp. And you have your decadimaceous earth. Again, $30 to $40 for a 50 pound bag. Okay. Now, I do get everything certified organic. So, except of course the decadimaceous earth. But I mean, my kelp is certified organic. Everything I feed my animals is certified organic. Am I certified organic? No. Why? Because I can't afford the $500 a year that it would cost to have the state come out here to certify me. You know, you add cost upon cost upon cost. And yes, we use a lot of the food for ourselves. Yes, we donate food to the food pantries and the soup kitchens in town. But you still got to make a little bit of profit because you can't take all of that out of your pocket. Now, I can tell you, the first year that we got into livestock, we had a horse, we had goats, 
and we had uh, chickens. This was before the sheep, before the rabbits, or no, it wasn't before the rabbits. We did have the rabbits. We had Angora rabbits. We put out of our pocket $12,000. That's $1,000 a month that we were putting out in order to get our animals healthy, keep our animals healthy, buy the feed that they needed, buy all the things that they needed to take them from conventional to organic because all of our animals were raised conventionally before we got them. That was one reason why this time I really wanted to start with babies because I wanted to know from the get-go that they were being raised organically, that they were being given kelp and dicotomaceous earth to use for parasite control and for their minerals, and that they weren't being pumped full of antibiotics and, you know, all this other stuff, hormones and all the things that they can give to animals. So, and that is a waiting game. You know, I know that the chicks that I just got, they're probably not going to lay until next spring. Now, if we have a really lengthy fall and it stays warm, they might lay maybe September, October, maybe. Um, but pretty well, you can count that we're going to raise these chicks for a year before we start getting eggs and definitely before we start getting eggs on a regular basis. Chickens don't lay in the winter unless you put heat and light in your chicken coops, which we don't. You know, we let them go into their natural winter molt. It keeps them laying longer, it keeps them healthier. There's no point of forcing an egg out of a chicken all the time year round when you can just as easily freeze the eggs, have them for winter use, and let the chickens get a much needed rest. So that's the way we do it here. The same way when we had goats. You know, we don't milk them right up until the time it's time to breed them and then breed them and let them have the babies and then immediately start milking again. That's not the way that we choose to do things. Um, and this is the way with a lot of small farms. And then people want to come along and tell you, you don't have the right to farm. You don't have the right to breed animals. You know, you don't have the right to do this. You don't have the right to do that. You know, to which I say, wrong. You do have the right. You know, as long as your property is zoned and ours is zoned agricultural, most farms are, you know, they don't have the right to come along just because somebody wants to complain and tell you what you can and cannot do on your property. You're paying the bills on that property. You're paying the property taxes on that property. It is your property. There are also federal laws in place that protect us and federal law trumps state law. So think about that. Okay. Um, can animals be a nuisance? I'm sure, you know, um, I don't like CAFOs. I think that that is abuse of the animals. The animals are not treated right. They stink. And yeah, that's a problem. But animals, animals are going to make sounds. Animals are going to have smells. It's just the way it is. You know, I could tell you from people visiting here that heard about the farm, found out we only had two and a half acres, and they came here expecting flies everywhere. They came here expecting, you know, insane stench. They came here expecting sick animals. And when they got here, they had questions like, where's the flies? How are you controlling those? You know, most farms we go to have a lot of flies. Well, I use dicotomaceous earth. I put it in the stalls on the floors. I feed it to the animals. No fly problem here. Well, what about the smell? Well, if you keep your animals clean, you're not going to have the problem with the smell. Now, do we have smells in the spring when we clean out the built up litter from the chicken coop and the barn? Yes, we do. 
when you start digging down into that, it looks dry on top because you've got fresh material on top. But when you start digging down into that, you're going to smell ammonia. It is wet down underneath of there. And there's nothing you're going to do about that. You know, if you clean it out all the time in the wintertime, you're not going to have that heat that that decomposition process creates, which helps keep the animals warm, which helps them get through the winter, especially if you have cold snap. So, you know, we try to clean out on a day where everything is semi-frozen, so the smell isn't as bad. You know, sometimes, like this year, it's rainy, it's nasty, there's very few days that we can get out of work, so we do what we can do. You know, that's the best you can do. I get my stuff right into the compost pile where it gets turned frequently and the smell very quickly dissipates. I also use a, it's a stall freshener that's done with essential oils that I use in my stalls. I use a little bit of lime when necessary. And this is another way that I keep the smell down. You know, big farms, they're not going to put this kind of effort and cost into it because a lot of times their bottom line is all about making the money. Okay, to those of us that have homesteads and small farms, it's about a lot more than making them the money. It's about the health of the animals. It's about the milk, the eggs, the meat that these animals produce. That's going to feed our families and other families around us. You know, we don't want something nasty and stinky and yuck. We want to keep it as clean and as sterile as possible so that we know that the food that we produce is safe to eat and safe to give or sell to others. So anyway, um, I hope that you guys will start paying attention to what's going on around you. I hope that you guys will start realizing that a lot of places are trying to push homesteaders and small farms out. And if any of that is happening in your community, I hope that you will step up and try to help that homesteader or small farmer. Because in all honesty, until everyone stands together and says, we're not going to allow this to happen, more and more homesteads and more and more farms are going to get shut down. And if you're on Facebook, I really want to encourage you to go look up Hidden Creek Farm. It is in Michigan. And follow their story of what's going on and see what you can do to help. Um, I know they're taking donations. They're trying to sell stickers and things to try to raise money for the $75,000 lawsuit that they're up against right now. So anyway, guys, please subscribe, thumbs up, thumbs down, comments below. Thanks for watching and have a great night.